am so excited to introduce our next guest. Dr. Sharon Meet Abrahams is the founder of Legal Talent Advisors. And she is, I've been chatting with her in the green room. She's a wonderful person. And we are going to talk about emotional intelligence and how we can use our emotions for so many positive uh, reasons in lots of different ways. So Sharon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. Oh. It is so fun. Lauren, I am so happy that you and Sharon know each other. And we were talking also in the green room, everyone, about how Lauren's circle of friends is wide and vast and deep. And I, we don't know how she does it, but it's pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, I, am, I am grateful and blessed to have um, you know, been connected to so many of yeah, it, it is right so up there. And what a great time to talk about emotion on any level, right? It absolutely is. I mean, okay, give us an give us an overview of the average emotional intelligence of our political leadership in 2020. <laughs> oh, <that's probably laughs> Do we start there? You know, but it, it's actually very funny that you ask that because in some EQ training um, before the current president took over, I actually had pictures of Obama and pictures of uh, Bush, number two, and talk about their emotional intelligence and you know whether or not they have it. I, I will refrain from current politics though. I think that's super smart. Okay, so let's talk more about emotional intelligence. We all know that we need it. We all seen you know, some crazy stuff going on this year and, and we need to be able to cope and adapt. And this is such a timely topic. So what do you think we, we should be doing and, and how do you want to get started with this conversation? So let me start with just explaining what emotional intelligence is, because I think some people confuse it with uh, IQ, which, mm -hmm. which is your intellect. And I want to just say right off the bat that we're born with our IQ. You pop out and that's the way you are. You can learn things as your life goes on, but your IQ level doesn't really change. Emotional intelligence is something that all of us, can develop over time. And in my training, I like to point to the character Sheldon on the Big Bang series. If you're a fan of Big Bang, for the, for the 12 years that I was a fan, I wished I could have recorded it and used it in my training, but that would be intellectual property. Uh, so I couldn't do that. But I could always refer to him. And if you're a fan, you saw his emotional intelligence improve over the 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so there you go, uh, a very easy example to look at. And you can learn it. And if he can learn it, anybody can learn it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's books written on it, but I feel that a lot of people, and, and my background is education, they don't, not everybody wants to sit down and read a book. They would rather learn through experience. And so I like to put people through experiences and let them sort of see that it's something they, that they can improve on. But I think right now with what's going on in our world, the most important thing to remember is that our emotions show on our face. Mm. And so if you were, you know, months ago now, mm -hmm. home with your with kids, mm -hmm. maybe your parents have uh, moved in with you or you've moved in with your parents, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to be stoic and, you know, really brave but it shows in your face. And I think that's the important part of it, that we need to understand our emotions so that we can manage our emotions. That's part one. And then part two is, is we need to be able to read the emotions of other people so that we can develop relationships. And so to Lauren having so many friends, it's because she has high EQ. And the profession that she's had for all of these years is because she has I high EQ, she can read people and understand them, which is what allowed her to help people be the best they could be. Mm. And that's what high EQ is, is helping other people be the best they can be. Oh, I love that. I that didn't is, know that. That's wonderful. I, that's, that is really awesome. It's, it's funny that you say that because I was talking to my boss um, over at Simplus yesterday and, and I was like, how you doing? And He's just like smiled, but like, it was like a, like a rigid smile. And I'm like, you got your game face on today. And then he just <laughs> totally relaxed and was like, I know I've been having a day, you know? And so it's, it's really great to be able to have that relationship ability to be able to know when someone is maybe not having a great day. And, but it's, it's a skill you have to develop though. Like it's hard. I think 
it's hard sometimes to read people and some people have way better poker faces than others too. Yes. Yes. And, and because I have spent so many years in law and I've dealt mainly with lawyers, they have a lot of game face because, you know, because they're advocating and, and, you know, trying to sway juries and things like that. But sometimes they actually just cover their own emotions. Mm -hmm. So it was always my goal to help tap in and mm -hmm. show them that they can actually look at their emotions and manage their emotions. So I want to do a little test with you guys. Okay. And see what your emotional intelligence is. Oh, no. On the spot. So, so the phone rings and all of our phones, even your home phones now, a name pops up. Mm -hmm. Immediate emotion. Like that. Right? So think of a name that immediately your heart goes, <clears throat> don't tell me who it is. Mother-in-law, father, brother who always wants money. Um, I'm gonna tell right? you, it says spam risk. <laughs> <laughs> Potential spam, that's the one that comes up for me too. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't answer the phone. All right, okay. But what happens is, like in the place of employment, um, the big boss calls you on the phone and you feel trepidation or you are concerned um, or maybe it's that complaining uh, colleague who you see their name pop up and you immediately go, oh, what are they going to complain about now? That's mm -hmm. you being in touch with your emotions. Mm -hmm. But understanding why when that name pops up, you feel that emotion, that's part of your emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so personal story personal story, I would have a boss, a boss's boss, and not just a boss, but a boss's boss. And I would think every time that phone rang, oh, what did I do wrong? What mm -hmm. did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. Hello, maybe nothing. Maybe he was calling with a question. But I had to become in touch with my emotions when that name popped up so that I could create a better and healthier relationship with him who was calling me for pretty generic reasons sometimes. And sometimes to yell at me, but that's okay. It's the work environment. Well, that was what I was going to ask you is like, do you think it, it happens because of your previous experiences? It, maybe not even just with that boss, but maybe with other bosses in the past, right? It probably is pretty complicated. Yes. Or a parent, right? Mm -hmm. So, so part, that's why part one of the emotional intelligence deals with your emotions. When you can be in touch with your own emotions and what drives you to make decisions and take actions and do things, then you're better able to manage yourself and manage those emotions. You need to get that in check before you can be open to other people mm -hmm. and, and see how they are and read like you read your boss's, you know, half grimace, half grin, and you knew that something was going on. So your EQ with your boss is, could be higher than your EQ maybe with someone else, or maybe you have a naturally high EQ because of the industry you're in and what you do. So think about that depending on what a person's career was. Mm -hmm. They either developed their EQ or maybe they didn't at all. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say doctors, lawyers, engineers, professional service firms, which is really my sweet spot, you know, CPAs, they really haven't necessarily built high EQ, but those that are successful in business development and getting new clients, they have EQ because That's they're making those connections. So it's unfortunate because some, some people have required that game face and they've developed it to such a degree. How then do you come in and help them break that down? How, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Well, that's so funny you say that. You just made me, a thing that popped right into my head was this attorney I worked with who said, oh, I get it. It's the illusion of care. Oh, like, oh you're like, you're I, swear. Yeah. <laughs> I swear that's what he said, the illusion of care. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, it's not the illusion of care. It's that you really do need you to actually care. Actually care. <laughs> 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 that is so funny. And so funny. Totally true. Totally true. And can, um, you that? can you teach someone to care? Okay. You really can't teach another person to care. That was when you were one years old and two years old. And when, you know, babies tend to smack at their parents and you, you grab the hand and you say, be nice, be nice. That's when caring actually starts. Mm -hmm. But if I can be in touch with my feelings of you know anger frustration whatever they are then i can control them and so 
I might not be caring for another person, but I won't be damaging another person. Mm -hmm. And that would be somebody who has EQ, maybe not the best EQ yet, right? And once they get themselves under control, then they can start uh, caring. I'll give you a perfect case uh, example. So I was working with a client this is an attorney, a female who was told, you will not make partner until you have a better relationship with your now third uh, uh, assistant. <laughs> and so I'm talking with her. I do assessments. I learn about the individual. And I understood her personality. Introvert, really focused on her job. Being kind and nice to other people really wasn't anything that she felt she needed to do. So I really had to work with her to change her behaviors. And then once you begin to change behaviors, you know, fake it till you make it kind of thing, then she would say to me, oh, my assistant actually called me and asked how I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's because you spent all this time developing a relationship with her and creating those lines of communication. And by the way, after six months, that person did make partner. So again, sort of the fake it till you make it, keep trying, keep trying. And, and if we go to um, Sheldon, right? Sheldon would say things like, is that sarcasm? Your face and your words don't match. But he, would, he, was, he was open to learning, right. but mm -hmm. right? He was always open to learning. So you try to convince the people to be open for learning. So let me do another little, a little test with you guys. Mm -hmm. I like to call this, and you can imagine uh, the visual that I would use from, um, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the name of a store, but it has a big red button, and you would press the button as a I've advertisement. I, so that's, I use that picture. Um, who pushes your buttons? So typically I would ask, if I'm doing a program for an audience, take out a piece of paper and pencil and write down the name of a person who pushes your buttons. Mm -hmm. And then as I go through the training, I say, what is it they do that pushes their buttons? Why do you think you react this way to them pushing your buttons? What if you reacted differently to them pushing your buttons? What would the outcome be? Do you see, and you kind of lead them through a different way of thinking things because people push our buttons, we're allowing them to push our buttons, right? They, they may be doing it for their own issues in their own head, <laughs> but we allow our buttons to be pushed. So if we can increase our emotional intelligence, understand why it's getting under our skin, be able to approach that person differently, then we're developing our EQ in the second level, which is the relationship building level. That's so like, interesting because okay. I always wonder, how do people know which buttons to like, how did, my yeah. know? how did my brother know that that was just going to set me up? But he knows. And if I ask him, how did you know? He's like, I don't know. You've always been that way. <laughs> yeah, and my other question is, do people push your buttons on purpose? And then also, like, if somebody is kind of like, what's the difference between, like, just, like, not understanding somebody and wanting to develop a relationship with them? And then, like keeping your distance because there's like a toxic environment. Right. You know, like how, how do you make that d determination? Right. All right. So you had a couple of questions in there. Yeah, I'm lost. Sorry. <laughs> one, one, about, <laughs> one about pushing buttons, right? Uh huh. Yes, there are people out there like uh, Lauren's brother who gets a kick out of pushing Lauren's buttons and siblings tend to do that because we can be ourselves and sometimes we want to get a rise out of our sibling, you know, and we do it for that reason. People push buttons also to get attention. You know, there is negative attention. So sometimes people do it for that. Um, we're not talking about politics today, but there's people who push lots of buttons for lots of reasons, right? And they get a lot of feedback from doing that. So some people do it. Now, the second part of your question was what now? <laughs> I don't remember. So like, how do you know if something is like, sorry, I, know I, I asked so many questions. How do you know if something is like, a potential to build an opera like a build a relationship bond or if they're just like toxic and you should stay away from them like how do you right. Know? right so that's really interesting i do a program and i actually did it uh last week called uh, handling toxic behaviors in the workplace and there are very specific toxic behaviors that people do exhibit and so if this is just a work colleague i would actually tell you to stay away from that individual because they have something 
mentally or physically going on that maybe you don't want to delve into. Mm -hmm. And so that might be for your own health and your own um, EQ and, and mental health. You want to stay away. But if it is someone that maybe you already have a relationship with or you were just beginning and you want to help them, mm -hmm. then you need to help them increase their EQ because people who have toxic behaviors have something going on that's creating a toxic behavior. Mm -hmm. And toxic behaviors are, you know, bullying, promising things and not doing them, uh, hoarding information, giving disinformation. Oh, sounds so familiar. Um, <laughs> these are all toxic behaviors. And so you have to decide, is it worth it? I will tell you, I have uh, brothers, uh, two brothers, and one has some little toxic behaviors that go on quite a lot. Uh, being a victim is a big toxic behavior. And when I deal with him, I never want to go down those rabbit holes when he starts, oh me, oh me, oh poor me, poor me. And I rather help him with whatever it is that, you know, I needed uh, to talk to him about or Try to divert the conversation about. and just yeah. focus on something else. And that's the management side. And you see go on with this conversation for another hour. <laughs> oh, I wish we had more time. Can you come back soon? I'm happy to be <laughs> Thank you so much. This is so interesting. So where do we go to legaltalentadvisors.com to um, book a session with you? Like how, what are your services just real quick? Yes. So Legal Talent Advisors, just about every single page has a way for you to click and shoot me an email. Um, the most important thing with coaching and in EQ coaching, any kind of coaching is I have to be the right person for you. Mm -hmm. So I always recommend go find two other people to talk to mm -hmm. because you have to have that EQ connection. So that's very important. But yes, through my website, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, so please link in and I push out all kinds of material and content on LinkedIn. So that's a, another great way to get a hold of me. Okay. And I appreciate talking with you ladies and, and sharing. My passion. You can tell I, I, I love this stuff. Well, it is so wonderful to talk with you. It's very easy to see that you yourself have a very high EQ and it's, it, you're very personable and it's, you know, I can't imagine anyone not completely connecting with you on an EQ level. So thank you so much for joining us and we will be right back. Thank you.